Welcome back to Marvel Good Yay, our spin-off series of the Geek Easy Podcast, where we're going back and watching all of the Marvel Cinematic Universe films and talking about them as we lead up to the release of Avengers Endgame. I am Pixel Dan. Jonathan Leonard. Jaron McCaffrey. And today we are talking Thor The Dark World. Jaron's favorite MCU film. All right, Jaron, take it away. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like this is going to be a short episode. <laughs> I I don't like this movie very much. <laughs> uh, Danny, I, Danny, back to you. Uh, <laughs> then the end. No, I I uh, am actually interested in this discussion because I don't think I think as strongly about it as you do okay. in, in that that aspect. But why don't we go ahead and start with Jonathan so you can give us a little bit of uh, facts on the movie's yeah, release. Yeah, released November of 2013. Uh, this is the first movie that came after Iron Man. Iron Man was the $1.2 billion, I think. Iron was. Man 3. Iron Man 3, yeah, yep. sorry. No. Um, the first movie after the last Iron Man. Yep. <clears throat> Iron Man was still riding the Avengers kick uh, and... and it was an Iron Man movie, so it had that huge box office. This one brings us down to earth a little bit, but still impressive numbers. Uh, it's a $170 million production budget, uh, $85 million opening weekend for a domestic total gross of $206 million it led to, uh, plus the foreign total of $438 million, so a grand total of $644 million it made off of that $170 million production budget. So definitely a financial success in every way, shape, and form. Uh, played strongly overseas as Thor movies tend to, mm-hmm. um, and uh, that, that that's the well, that's that's the money info. Yeah, cool. So who who made this movie? Alan Taylor, and he has done. He was a Game of Thrones guy. He's the Game of Thrones yeah, guy. He's gone on. He did the Terminator Genesis yep. movie. Yeah, uh, and I'm not sure if he's done much else big, like yeah. big budget Hollywood yeah. stuff or not, but. Uh, it was one of those instances where it really, I'm bringing the Game of Thrones guy in, felt like an inspired choice. Yeah. Well, was he the Game of Thrones guy at this point? Was that going then? Yeah, that was going then. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah, I, I, yeah, I think that sounds like an inspired choice. You know, I, I never realized before that it was the Game of Thrones guy mm-hmm. doing this. Yeah. And I don't um, know, how, like, I know he worked on Game of Thrones. I don't know if yeah. he was the showrunner or if he well, just did some episodes or you what, know, but I know that's where they got him. Like, like, having said that, I definitely can see the influence because Thor Dark World is, is slow and flat and kind of relies <laughs> on complex character play, but it's just not there with Thor. <laughs> the yeah. way it is in Game of Thrones. Yeah. So, like, I can definitely see the influence there. Well, looking and I can, now. you know, kind of like looking back, because between this and uh, Terminator Genesis, which is not the basis of this podcast, so we don't have to talk about it a ton, <clears throat> but I will say that's two movies I've seen him made that I think had a lot of potential. Yeah. And there's just something that I can't quite put my finger on that, that falls, I mean, flat, I think is the best word for it. Because going back and rewatching this movie this time, I really enjoyed it coming out of theaters. I remember specifically, I yeah. thought they did a lot of really cool stuff. Uh, and I'm always writing a Marvel high coming out of the movies anyway. Yeah. Looking at it more in retrospect, I also don't. I mean, I, I would still consider myself liking this movie. Yeah. It's way at the bottom of my Marvel list, <coughs> but I still liked it fine. But I I can't argue with you on a lot of that. I mean, there's just a lot of things where like. If I describe what they're doing, it sounds cool, but as I'm watching it, it just doesn't play that well. Yeah. You know? Uh, yeah, I, I don't feel like this movie has any life in it. I think um, looking at this movie post-Ragnarok specifically, which is like prime Thor, Yeah, <laughs> it, it really does, um, I think it affects this movie negatively for sure. Yep. Um, because I, I'm the same with John. Like I, when I came out of this movie, I remember really, really liking it. I have not watched this movie since then. Have not. Um, so this was my first time rewatching it, um, and I, I, I thought there were several enjoyable moments in this movie. Um, but I can't, I can't argue with it being flat at yeah. all. At all. The, you know, there, there are definite things. <clears throat> there, there are definitely things that I don't, that I do like. And a lot of the, I t- I, the, a lot of the notes I took are things that I do like. Um, I, I did not. So okay, um, when we talk about, uh, like, even you, you talk about Ragnarok, and like through looking back through the lens of La- Ragnarok, 
really affecting this negatively. Yeah. Even if you look back at the first Thor, the first Thor was so much fun. Yeah. And there's none of that fun in this. <clears throat> and, you know, to me, like, it, it's it's almost... Uh, Man, yeah, it, it's I, it's almost I, like they tried to ground it and make it all serious, and like that's not you know I I want my magical space Viking to be a rip roaring good time, you know what I mean? Like he this, should. This is entering my head as we're talking about it, but I feel like they were trying to make a much darker themed movie than yeah. we're used to out of the Marvel universe. Yep, but just didn't go all in on that idea. Right. Because I mean, there's some heavy things that happen in this movie. Yeah. Uh, the bad guys have that. You know, the dark elves uh, have that kind of feel to them, to where they could be a lot more sinister than they end up being. Right. That could be a a, a real heavy bad guy. A real yeah. heavy heavy. I guess, uh, if, if played right. So it's like they have all these angles and aspects that could take it over that edge, and they have a guy who theoretically is used to going to that place, and they just never quite go there. Cause so it's almost, like, like, almost like they wrote an Avengers movie with just Thor. Kind of, sort of. Except, yeah. I, mean, the, like, I mean, really, because like, the Avengers movies are still... Bright and happy. I mean, I mean, in the stakes. Yeah, the stakes. yeah, yeah. Exactly. Okay, I can see that because that's the thing. Like, I mean, I mean, this is the one where Thor and Loki's mom dies, right? You know, and even that scene like didn't play off that emotional. Yep. You know, yep. like you they they wanted it to be. Yeah. There's a lot of stuff they could have done with this where if they would have just pushed it a little farther, you, you could be like it would it would be like a like a Batman feel. You know, like those movies always had those dark tones. And whatnot, like the earlier uh, Tim Burton ones, you know, right. like weird but dark. Yep. You know, uh, and this one has like the flashy aspects and the dark ideas yeah. that they just never put that. And I don't know if that's an Alan Taylor thing or if that was Marvel <clears throat> being sketchy on the idea of taking it too far because, right. I mean, they, they have their, their style right. and whatnot. I tend to think since I've seen at least one other Alan Taylor film feature film that has yep. a lot of the exact same issues. I would tend to think it was probably him right, more, right. More, more than Marvel, but that's sort of kind of where I can see that maybe being the issue. Like, maybe they had this really heavy story they wanted to tell, but then they tried to make it... They, they didn't go all in on that idea. Yeah. So you can't put fun <clears throat> magic god aspects into that yep. without it just feeling kind of like a mess. Right. You know? <clears throat> so maybe that's sort of what happened here. Cool. How do you guys want to start this? Do you want to like do scene by scene or just kind of, you got notes. Up to you guys. I like your notes. Your notes are always a good uh, (laughs) guide for us to get through it. I think if we go go scene by scene, our show will be boring. Uh, (laughs) Yeah. All right. Yeah. Let's just highlights. Let's do it. All right. Highlights. Um, So in the beginning, we have the the war. Uh, There's there's a war going on on Mm -hmm. some planet and uh, Thor shows up. The, the you know the, the Warriors three and Lady Tiff are there leading the fight and then Thor arrives. I just thought it was a super boring way for Thor to arrive. You know he just kind of like the the what do they call that the thing? Bifrost the Bifrost yeah. the Bifrost just kind of rainbows in and then he's just standing there. Yeah, yeah. The Bifrost his hammer. is fixed now. Yep. You yeah. know when you when you compare it, yeah the Bifrost is just fixed. You yeah, know? they and talk it didn't, about it. It didn't destroy that world. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I do love I love how they made a big deal about how like they'll never be able to travel again. And yeah. then the Avengers happened and they went out of their way to have like a reason for why they did, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. like to make sure they referenced it so it was so it was out there at least. And then like you said, like this movie just happens and eh, this is there. Did yeah. you and like not only is it just there, they're still like then they had to make an excuse for why Thor hasn't been back to Earth yet. Right. You know. Well did you also notice though that they kind of they tried to cover that all up? Because at one point they they referenced like uh, the, we can't use the tesseract to travel because it's locked up in the vault, and we can't, you know, like yeah. they they did they tried to cover all those tracks yeah. at one point in the movie. I really noticed that they went out of their way to say that at one yep. point. Um, so you know, Thor just shows up, and it's Thor's movie. That's fine, but when you contrast it to when they in even in Iron Man three. The first time, you know, they give us like the like he puts on the Iron Man suit and then turns around to square off with those three 
terrorist helicopters. <clears throat> like that feeling of like, oh, it's on now. There's Iron Man. Yeah. yeah. You know, like I didn't get that from like, oh, there's Thor. It's just like, oh, there's Thor. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, there's. Well, Thor. and then they do that like, like the crux of that scene is they build to this like they're they're going through this battle and it's kind of back and forth and then all of a sudden like everything stops and this giant rock monster shows up yep. which, which not, looked like a big Korg. which is not Korg. Yeah. right yeah, yeah. it's yeah. got to be the same well, I, I noticed that this time I was like wow that's um, must be the same species as Korg. yeah but, you know but like he like everybody separates and the thing walks up and like there's this standoff where Thor makes a joke and everybody kind of laughs which felt weird and well, then he, like he comes the, up and roars at him <laughs> yeah. and Thor goes. I accept, I accept your, your surrender. surrender. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And I, like, like, all, like the good guys and the bad guys all kind of chuckled. It seemed, yep. you know. And, but then, like that, then they don't do anything cool. Then, like, there's a weird pause, and then Thor just slowly hits him, smashes him into a million, pieces and that's with it. You know, like because even e- even this time, having seen the movie before and remembering thinking that was cool, I don't know why I thought yeah. that was cool. Maybe I am just a fanboy. Maybe that's all there is to <laughs> the it. internet. Yeah. Was right. Maybe, maybe I will just eat whatever they give me. The internet was right. But. Uh, Watching that scene this time, even now I was expecting it, like that thing to regrow and then to actually fight, and yeah. then it just didn't. I was like, yeah. "Oh, that that was yeah. it. I know. That's all well, that happened." I well, hope- speaking about looking <laughs> back, it, like through the lens of Ragnarok, like knowing Korg, I felt like that was a super sad scene because yeah. because you know the first time we watch it, it's just oh, big rock monster, and Thor destroys the the big rock monster. Now it's like. That thing had a family and you know <laughs> and a weird, a little, mom, a weird a mom, little friend. You know, yeah. Well well I mean we at least know that it had a mom and like can have stepdads and you know, is and is made of perishable rock, right? I was gonna say I You hope- know, so like it's kinda just like wow, Thor just straight murdered that thing, yeah. you know, in one hit. I hope Cork never mouths off to Thor. Right. He doesn't have much of a chance. <laughs> so you can have a stepdad. <laughs> Well, isn't that what Cork Cork yeah. had to step that, right? Okay, yeah, 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 yeah. Because yeah. he's, he's, he's the only one that shows up to the revolution. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Okay. Cork's the best. Yep. <laughs> uh. um, so, I did think it was... Uh... Okay, so after that, they win the war, and they go back to uh, Asgard and have a party. Right. Right? Yeah. Um, I did really like... There's there's a scene where they kind of call back to the diner, which is one one of my favorite scenes from Thor when he smashes the coffee cup. He's like, I'll have another! And smashes the coffee yeah, cup. Yeah, they do that. They, do they that totally thing. call back to that because there's the party and who's who's the big the big one? What's his name? <laughs> Ray Stevens. Not Gimli. Yeah. I don't remember his name. <laughs> Not Gimli. Yeah, I don't, I don't remember his character name. Not but Stevenson. Gimli. I even messed up his actor name. <laughs> yeah. No, we're gonna go with not Gimli. <laughs> so not not Gimli's at this party, and he and he drains a, a flask of mead or whatever, and he goes, "I'll have another," and just chucks it into the air, and you hear it smash, and you see Thor sitting at the end of the table, and he kind of laughs and looks at his own own glass, and then sets it down. Yeah, I, I thought that was, I thought that that was something I really liked. I was like, that's a really clever moment. Yeah, totally. Um, however, I do not like sad Thor. Oh. And even though he's like pining for his girlfriend, this is Jane Foster. Yeah, but it doesn't, which doesn't make any sense anymore. <laughs> exactly, yeah. you know, exactly. Like, and that's that's why I don't like it. Yeah, you know, like like it's completely <laughs> pointless at this point. He's been back to Earth, <laughs> you, yeah. you know. Yeah. Um, and instead, well, and even like I mean, they do like it, uh, shortly thereafter. Shortly hereafter, like he goes to Heimdall to check on her, right? And Heimdall can't find her, yep. So he goes to Earth. Yes. Why did he just go to Earth right. to check on her instead yep. of going to Heimdall? And he get, he makes the excuse when he was there, like, well, we had all these wars, and I, you know, all these people were dying, and I had to go fix this. Like, like, okay, yeah, you did. Yeah. That's fine. And she 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 gives that line where she's like, well, I guess as far as excuses go, that's that's okay. That's a good you know? one. Yeah, it's a pretty but, good one. But it, but like at no point did he, I mean, he couldn't have popped by to say, hey, I I, I can travel now. I'm just right. busy. Yeah, you know. Yeah. Or it, again, even when he just went to see, why was he going to Heimdall to check on her if he could just go there anyway? Yes. Why wasn't he going to her to check on her? You know. Good point. Yep. <laughs> Now I think that's that you talked about the explanation to her. Like that's where he kind of explained. That war that we saw, like he he gave he gave that real quick, almost throwaway excuse to Jane of why he hasn't been there. Of he's been basically getting all of the realms back in order since the Bifrost was broken, right? right. Like that's the whole thing. That's yep. that's why that war was happening. Right. It was like one of the last little cleanups he basically had to do because apparently when the Bifrost broke, 
all the realms just got out. Everybody, of order yeah, everybody fell into everybody, disarray. Yeah, so he had to go clean all that up. Yep. So that's that was like his thing. That was his excuse for yeah. why he hadn't checked on Jane. So yeah, and now the Bifrost is fixed. Yeah. Which I I don't know. I just uh, yeah, that is one of the. the because I, I excused it in Avengers because we have to have all of them there for Avengers. Yeah. And yeah. Well, and they said they made an excuse in the like, Avengers yeah. about like because Loki even made a line about how you know like how much dark energy or dark magic or whatever energy, yeah. did they have to expend to get you here? Yep. Yeah, you know, so like yeah. they made it uh, how like he can't just travel willy nilly. Right. But yeah. This was yeah. a big deal, so we had to come. So right. That made total sense. And I guess like uh, they do like. Loki's little hidden passage thing comes up in this movie. Yeah. Like what he used to escape. Yeah. But yeah, the, the fact that the Bifrost was like, it was such a, such a decisive, like the Bifrost is ruined. That's it. That's the end of yeah, that. Was, we'll never be able to well, travel and, again. And, I'm, I'm fine. and then this movie just starts with the Bifrost yeah. just there. Well, <laughs> well, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm fine with the idea that they could fix it. And right. I'm fine with the idea that it being broken caused all these wars. Like all that makes sense. It was just presented in such a throwaway thing. Like, yes. It just happened yes. between movies and was no big deal apparently. Yeah, right, yeah exactly. Exactly. Um... Okay, um, so uh, you know I really liked the line. Speaking of when he goes to have Heimdall check on uh, Jane, Jane, uh, he comes in and he said, you know, he says, uh, <laughs> "Merriment can be a bigger burden than battle sometimes." <laughs> and Heimdall says, "Well, I think you're doing one of them incorrectly." <laughs> I like that line. Um, so I don't have any notes because all the stuff that happened on Earth with Jane Foster was just I was bored out of my mind. Yeah, uh, you know, none of it was particularly bad. It just I good, just good, wasn't good. I good ideas not presented in an entertaining way. Yeah, you know, like I thought it was neat. Yep. That, uh, that you know they start finding all these portals and stuff like that. Yeah, they find um, the the portals, the weird gravitational fluxes. Uh, they talk about Selvig being crazy. I was gonna say I enjoy the crazy Selvig stuff. Yeah, crazy. Uh, yeah. The crazy <laughs> Selvig is is yeah. Well, like, I, I love to, because, like, and this is way later, but they even, like, ask him what's happened to him or whatever, and he's like, I've had a god in my head, or yeah. something like that. Yep. Like, I liked all that. Yeah. <laughs> I, love, I love later on when they cut to him, and he's given that explanation, like, he's in a classroom or whatever, of what's going on, and they pan out, and he's just in a, in a nut house. Yeah, the middle of <laughs> Stanley, can yeah. I have my yeah. shoe back? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's good stuff. Yeah. Um, uh, seeing seeing Kellen Skarsgård running around Stonehenge with no clothes on, <laughs> yeah. that's that's good stuff. That no, I don't good care stuff. who you are. Also, he's just are. running around in his underwear for a good chunk of the movie too. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, I did like the intern's intern. The intern's intern was funny. Uh, yeah, it was fine. It was. Uh, I felt like it was a lazy joke, some amusement, but yeah. a lazy joke. Um, but I felt like that with everything. Uh, Cat Dennings did. Yeah, like I just felt I like that. The, you know they were just, almost almost that thing where they're like, oh, Cat Dennings will be funny. It, we don't have to write for it. You know what I mean? <laughs> I keep skipping around the movie now, but I did. They, they share they share that one very laugh out loud moment <laughs> at the end when they're yes. doing all the portal stuff. You know, and like I don't remember even like who started, but it was like. It was when she was making out with the with her intern, okay. and like she just got portaled in front of Jane, and you know, and, and Jane's like, "What was her name? Darcy?" Yeah, and she's like, "Darcy." And turns around to Jane, and then like Selvig comes up, and they're like, "Selvig!" And then the, the hammer flies by through one of the portals, and she just goes, "Meow, meow." Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yep. Yeah, that was good. <laughs> um, yeah. So I don't I don't have any notes for any of that. Um, uh, I did. I did think it was funny because they find the one portal and they're dropping stuff through it. Yeah. And uh, uh, when they throw the keys, when the, the intern's intern throws oh, the keys, that's so good. And it doesn't come back because yeah. those are the car keys. Yeah, yeah that was good stuff. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I laughed. I laughed about that. Um. So that's where we get the. Uh, so so Jane Jane gets uh, accident ends up getting sucked into a portal. And that's where she finds the ether, yeah. mm-hmm. which is actually the reality Infinity Stone. Right, which we don't find out during the movie. We don't find movie, out during the movie. But we do find out at the end of the movie. Oh, so we, I find, that we was, find out in the middle of the They don't call it an Infinity well, Stone. Well, they don't call right. it an Infinity yeah. Stone, but they definitely, at one point, uh, when, when Odin is explaining it, he says it's an essence from the beginning of the universe. <laughs> Most of them take stone form. This one takes a liquid form. Oh, I, didn't catch that. I did yeah. not catch he, he that. He absolutely says that. Oh. Yep. 
<clears throat> I was gonna say I thought I thought the first reveal of it being an Infinity Stone was the post credit scene. The, fir- the first time they ca- say is, Infinity Stone, like, I think, but he is definitely explaining it as like which. Well, we'll get to it. We'll, yeah. we'll talk a, about it's that. A, it's another there. one of those things where I mean, I mean, they go through that thing where she gets. Like it, well, she doesn't get sucked into it. I guess it gets sucked into her, or whatever. Oh, gets, like it basically oh, the, possesses her, yeah, or it possesses whatever. Her, yeah. And I feel like there's a lot there mm-hmm. that they could have done with the idea of her being taken over by this thing. Like they could, they could have almost done some sort of Dark Phoenix style. Yeah, they could have given her say, some power. They could have given her some bad thoughts. She could, have, you know, yeah. She she could have turned weird from it they somehow. Never really, they could have done a lot of things. You're right. to, to make that a cool story, but instead she she gets it and then she gets a little sick. Yep, and then it gets out of her. They know, yeah. yeah. They never. She really, doesn't explode. They, or, take yeah. it, they never take it to the next level, <laughs> yeah. right? Yeah, like yeah. they 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 even almost kind of start teasing stuff like that, like because it's like protecting her, right? So yeah, like exactly. like they do all those scenes where like anytime somebody kind of threatens Jane, the ether reacts mm-hmm. and like protects her, and then like even and I know we're jumping around, but whatever. But like well, we get we, when they get to the part where. They're bringing her to the elves' world, like her eyes gloss over and turn all black, and like it almost looks like it's gonna be like some sort of powerful yeah. outburst of the ether, yeah. and then it's just not. Like, yeah. like it doesn't do anything. Like, wouldn't, yeah, wouldn't it have been neat if it had really taken over for her? Yeah, and Thor had to fight her with this yeah. thing in it to get it out it's of her, super, or something cool. Super yeah. weird <laughs> yeah. that they just never really went anywhere with it. Yep. But instead, we get Malekith. <laughs> Which I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead and maybe this will be a, something that'll I have to throw my nerd card away for. <laughs> Until I watched this movie the second time, I totally overlooked the fact that this is actually Malekith, which is a Thor villain from the comics. Oh, I overlooked okay. that completely, and I don't know how I overlooked it, but literally, like, they call him Malekith in the movie a couple times, and it didn't click in my head until the scene occurred where he lightninged half of his face, yeah. and then we got the half-black face and everything, and I went, oh, Malekith! <laughs> <laughs> From the comic books. I have well, no idea why I overlooked that before, but I, I guess it's probably has a lot to do with um, how kind of lame they treat this villain. I don't know. Like yeah. it just... He is easily immediately the worst Marvel villain, right? He uh probably I'm not I'm not He's he's at the bottom I, of the yeah. pool. Easy. Yeah. Easy. Twenty twenty movies in saying that on a whim, I have a tendency to hesitate to just go, Yeah, definitely. But I probably I can't think of a worse one. He's, you know? <clears throat> uh he's a good uh, He's a good actor that they got to play him. Is Christopher yeah. Eccleston? You've seen him. He was in. You've at least seen him in the first season of Heroes. Uh, no, nope. don't remember. Yeah, I see. There him were no. In, there were no elves in the first season of oh, good Heroes. Call. And he had a beard. You wouldn't recognize him. <laughs> uh, he's one of those guys. He's a good actor, but uh, he. I don't know why he does fun projects because he just hates. Fun. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So he's, he's one of those guys where, well, like, as, that, soon I mean, as, as soon as this movie was done, he was just bad mouthing having to be in this movie or whatever. Yeah. And like, well, I mean, just, that that sounds like the whole crux of this this movie. Yeah. So I'm I'm sure they called him and they were like, "Hey, you hate fun. <laughs> <laughs> You're we're, perfect. we're launching a campaign against fun." <laughs> I was gonna say too. Dan, if you've got to turn your card in, I do too, because other than like knowing that there was a character called Malik, if I knew nothing about yeah, him, I don't I, know I'm not even of... sure if I would have known him as a Thor villain before yeah. this movie. Yeah, I, Sam... I, he's one of those guys that like I know exists. I know yeah. he's a character. I you say his name, I know what he looks like, but like, I didn't. For, I didn't even know that really. So yeah. for for whatever reason, I just didn't make the connection until I I rewatched this movie. <laughs> I'm not. <laughs> so, I'm not. I'm not turning in my nerd card. I've never watched a. I've never read a single Thor comic book. I mean, just... we. Did, I mean, and we did talk about that the last I didn't, time. Yeah, I, did, yeah. I never read a yeah. comic It's not like we're big fans. But I always collected all the trading cards and stuff when I was a kid when Marvel oh, was coming yeah. out with them. So I knew about a lot of characters through that and some of the encyclopedias and stuff. Yeah. I can say the same for the read. action figures, honestly. Because yeah. like Malik, I think about the Malekith action figure. Oh, nice. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like I knew nice. him I know him as a toy and that's yeah, so yeah. Now I said like I I I think as with a lot of this movie, I think the Dark Elves had a lot of potential. But I don't think they deliver on anything. Oh, they didn't deliver on anything at all. Like, like they were boring gray, boring gray things running around exactly. that got destroyed real easy. Except, except for Malekith and his right hand 
golem yeah. thing. Well, and whatever. as I say, yeah. they had they had those things that were you know the one that like the, I mean they were willing to sacrifice themselves to turn into these weird Hulk monsters. Yeah. Um, they they obviously had like a lot of <laughs> which 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 is a weird sacrifice. I'm gonna I'm gonna make you invincible. Yeah. Okay, great. Yeah. <laughs> you know, but but you're gonna be a monster and there's yeah. no coming back. <laughs> right. You know? I mean, I get. It, yeah. I mean, I it's get like it. it's like Banner turning into the Hulk, but never ever being able to <laughs> stop. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, until he just burns out. <clears throat> but uh, like I said, I mean, there was clearly a lot of background. There was a lot of history to him. There was a lot of emotion potential for the story. These could have been cool characters. Yeah. These weren't. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Um, so I guess we can skip ahead to the, well, I don't know if it's skipping ahead, but, uh, so we see Malekith wake up and I hate him. And <laughs> then we get to, uh, the attack on, well, Thor brings, Thor brings Jane cause he finds her with the ether, realizes something's wrong and he brings, brings her back to Asgard and, and everybody's super mad about that <laughs> cause mostly Odin. Yeah. Well, you know, that, that was another thing that I, I have, I have, I feel like is an oversight, you know, because he's mad at Loki for wanting to rule the humans. And, you know, they have that argument where, he, you know, he's like, I was going to be a god to them or whatever. And he's, you know, he's like, we're not gods. You know, we live lives just like they live. But then he's just born. We live. We die. Right. But give then he's give or take five thousand years. Yeah. But yeah. then he's just super petty and doesn't like, you know, like when she shows up, he's just like, I ah, Thought I wanted you to be with. I thought I told you to be with Sith, and now you bring this human in my house. <laughs> yeah. You know, like that. That doesn't match up to me. Yeah. Well, I mean, they're, they're like, remember too how petty himself Odin was. Like, in, like and then like we don't see that Odin in the movies, but there's yeah. a lot of references yeah. to basically him just being a warrior god. Yeah. For a long time, and then that. So like when Loki's doing the thing where he's like, "I wanted to follow in your footsteps," and Odin's like, "That's not how it is anymore," right. you know. But that doesn't mean that he wants his soon to be king son. Yeah, but to be to be with the you know like like we you know they're 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 mortals. We respect them, but she's gonna be around for fifty years. Yeah. And we're gonna be around for five thousand, and she's weak, and we're strong, and you know, like I, 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 I can, I can see those as being separate issues. But I, yeah, but I almost feel like that makes it even more because you know, all right, let, you know, I, I mean, you know, okay, he needs to sow some wild oats for the next fifty years, then he'll marry Sith. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, like okay, you know, like like she's gonna be gone in a blink. Why is he that worried about uh, her? Yeah, that's fair. You know, but then also he he flip flops so hard from like. You know, get her up, get her out of here. She's she's sick. She's gonna die. That's what mortals do. Uh, oh, she's got the ether. Come come with me, darling. Yeah. Come, let me tell you all about. It. You know what I mean? Like like yeah. it just flips so hard. And I I know he wants the ether or whatever, but he doesn't maintain any of that snottiness. You know what yeah. I mean? It's not like let me tell you about what's going on with you. Yeah. You know, it's like, oh, you have the ether. Come, <laughs> we have to go talk about this. Have a seat. Can I get you a drink? Are you okay? <laughs> Thor, get her a pillow. She's, you know, like she's with child or something. You know, it's just a completely hard flip for me, which is a small annoyance. Because um, what I really want to talk about is how awesome is it that Heimdall just runs out and takes down a spaceship with two knives? Yes. yes. Like, yes. Oh my god, I love yeah. it. That's like when he so catches yeah. he catches that ship floating by <laughs> invisibly, and he just runs out there with two knives, not even his big Bifrost sword, yeah. two two little daggers, and he. Destroys the whole spaceship. Yeah. And then turns around, there's 50 more. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah Heimdall's, cool. Heimdall's awesome. Yeah. yeah Always awesome. awesome. Love Heimdall. Yep. Love Heimdall. Yeah, that was awesome. Um, okay, so then so then we get to the elves attack, the dark elves attack. Yeah. They just, uh, you know, considering that there's been, what, 50 of them just floating around in space and suspended animation for... 70,000 years. I mean, yeah, you know, since, since Thor's grandfather defeated them, right? Yeah. yeah. Um, man, they come in and just take Asgard apart. You yeah. Know? Like, yeah. I, thought, I was like, okay, whatever. Um, uh, and they kill, they kill Freya. And, you know, they kind of, because you've got Loki in jail yep. for a while here. Oh, yeah. And they, you know, and they're doing the jail break where, you know, one of the elves gets himself arrested and then turns into the weird Hulk elf thing. Yep. Breaks himself out, starts breaking everybody else out. Decides not to break Loki out. Right. But then, like, as he's walking away, Loki kind of gives him directions on where to go. Yep. And I don't, like, I feel like, like, he sort of led 
him to like he basically let him kill his mom. Right. Yeah. Is, yeah, is yeah. what I thought yeah, they were building yeah, to, but then yeah. they never really No, they, they never, didn't. Yeah, no. I mean, that's a, it's another like clear cut here's a real cool dark aspect of this story. Right. Something we could have Loki play off of. Except then we never just we just it just didn't we yep. don't do anything with that, you know? Yep. <clears throat> He gets Except, sad I mean, he about gets, it. Yeah, he gets sad about it, but he never takes any responsibility yeah. for yeah. giving the thing directions to where, you know, or, yeah. you know, well, there, there's, there's no accountability towards that at all. Yeah. yeah. Other than the fact that he tore his own cell up and, and looked disheveled. Right. Yeah. You know, and then they just forget about it. Yep. Which is and so- he got along with his mom really well. I mean, that was like the, the thing that, like, they, they played on that relationship. They built that up like it was but a She thing. was like the only one that he really they loved, put ev- right? Yeah, they put everything into place. For that story, that part of the story, and then just it, it, I, I almost wonder if it's one of those things where they just decided to cut it for time or something. Yeah. But, but it seems like a real important thing to just leave on the editing room floor. Also, if they did shoot that stuff, yeah. Yep. I don't know. Yeah. It's weird, weird movie. <laughs> weird <Yep>. movie. <laughs> um, and you kind of you kind of alluded to it earlier uh, when they kill Freya. There's no motion in that scene. Yeah. It's just it's just it's flat. Like like I don't want to call it boring, but it's super boring. Yeah, they just they just kill her and then she's dead. Like they made her pretty hardcore for a second and yep. then she's yeah. gone. And, yeah, she and, did fight good. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> and she she used it. She was she used the little trick, the little yeah uh, yeah I illusion that was, trick, that was neat. which was yeah you know neat yeah. to see that that's kind of where Loki, Loki got it from yeah. for yeah. sure. You know that that was a cool because uh, for everybody who hasn't watched the movie, right? So she takes Jane. And she has an illusion of Jane, so that when Malekith comes to get the ether from Jane, she's not really there. Yeah. But then they kill her. Why wouldn't there illusions of both of them? Or uh, you know something yeah, like yeah. like she just kind of you know they just let her die. Yeah. So she dies. I guess they needed the push, and then here comes Thor and Malekith escapes. I guess he gets. Yeah. I guess that's he where he gets lightning in the face. He gets yeah. lightning in the face, and then they. But then he just <laughs> escapes. But then then he they escapes. just yeah. escapes. Yeah. Yeah. I also like how like like Mjolnir was. He threw Mjolnir after them, and then the ship went into like camouflage, and I guess it can't be struck by a giant hammer. Mjolnir, when it Mjolnir goes, got confused. When it goes into man. camouflage. Yeah. 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 Where'd it go? That's what Mjolnir was like. Whoop whoop. Where'd it go? <laughs> It's like like those bullets in the yeah, Roger, like Roger Rabbit. <laughs> Where'd he go? I don't know. He went that way. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> well, I'll always think about that now. Yeah. Yeah. You mean all the times you watch Thor the Dark World? Yeah, in the future? well, I guess that's true. <laughs> um, so then they have to go. So, uh,. Thor is super upset, wants revenge. Yeah. Um, but they also, he knows Malekith can get the ether out of Jane, right? Uh, which seems there again like kind of a conflicting motivation. You know what I mean? Like, like they don't fit together. Like, like one or the other makes sense. Right. You know, well, he's the only one that knows how to control the ether. Or I want to go murder him because he murdered my mom. Uh, but. Well, we got to go trick him into pulling the ether out of her, and then murder him and destroy the like. You know what? I, I don't know. It just it seems like convoluted writing. Yeah, like they just stack too much into that. Yeah. to and then try to figure it out together. Yeah, and then give you bland payoffs. Right. You yeah. know, um, because there's a whole thing too where it's like they're trying to play it like <clears throat> Thor is the one tricking Loki a couple of times throughout right. this whole process, also. And none of that really plays that well yeah. either. I don't know if it's underexplained or overexplained <laughs> yeah, or no. just well, doesn't it's, fit. Well, but. yeah, it just doesn't fit. It's it's totally underexplained because because he, he goes and he and he gets Loki and he's like ah you know he's basically like I need your help because I need to know how to sneak <clears> out of here without you know because because well, Heimdall won't help him with the Bifrost right right because right. he can't betray the king right um so he just so he needs Loki to show him how to sneak out and Loki agrees because they're gonna. He wants revenge too, right? Um, which the scene where they're when he breaks him out and they're walking and he's doing the shape shifting. Oh, yeah, bit, that's good stuff. That is the only time in this movie when this movie comes alive. Yeah, you know, and I and I, and I don't and and not just like Tom Hiddleston is so great. 
You know what I mean? Just like that scene is is a great scene. Yeah. You know, where he turns he turns her into Sith or he turns Thor into Sith for a minute. Yeah. He's like you know, he's like, it's not gonna <laughs> well, I just love that he's like, it's not gonna hurt any less when I kill you like this. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know? Um and then then he's Captain America for a minute and like even the background music is Captain America. Yeah. You yeah. know, that's great. I remember being slightly worried about that scene because yeah, when they were talking about uh, a lot of when they you know when when they would talk about actor contracts and stuff for that, there was uh, reports of you know like Chris Evans being on a six movie deal, but theoretically any cameo would count yeah. as one of the movies. So I remember being like, that scene was awesome, but if we lose a Captain America movie <laughs> over that, <laughs> yeah, 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 that'd be, that'd be totally ridiculous. I totally yeah. remember talking about yeah. that yeah. back then. Yeah. I, I do love that when he's just like, oh, the confidence. I can right. feel it. Like the pants the suits, are kind of yeah. tight, like, though. Yeah, so tight. Yeah. The confidence. Yeah. yeah. God bless America. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So good, man. Yeah. <laughs> so so that's great. Um, but yeah, so then so then they, they trick, you know, Thor tricks Loki a couple times because, uh, you know, they act like he's going to be... They're gonna fly out on this one thing on one of the alien ships, but you know, then they trick trick them and jump <laughs> out so that the forces of Asgard destroy that ship and think they've killed Thor, right? You know, but then they're on one of the little Asgard flying ships yeah, that the, the that er, Errol Flynn is is flying. <laughs> yeah, for, you know Errol I mean? Flynn. Yeah, totally. So <laughs> the, the the new Errol Flynn. Yeah. So you know what I mean, but those are just such weak tricks, you know, and and Loki Loki plays them up like, ah, oh, you tricked me, brother. I like this side of you. It's like get out of here, man. That's not like <laughs> You're just not having it with this movie, dude. No, man. <laughs> well, it's it's you know none of it, none of it, none of it gets there for me. You yeah, know what I mean? Like like yeah. I can't I I can't help like I I went into Iron Man two. To take Iron Man two down because I hate Iron Man two. I did not go into that with this movie, but this movie disappointed me way more than Iron Man two did. Yeah, yeah. At least you know, at least I had a fun time finding how bad Iron Man two is. <laughs> Nothing in this movie is that bad. It's just all boring. I was bored through the whole thing. And just Iron waiting Man, for it to get over. Iron Man two had Whiplash still. Which Iron Man I two still had Whiplash. Think yeah, is one of the better villains that yeah. they've had. Yeah. Absolutely, I love Whiplash. I, I still love that scene. Yeah. In the middle, the, you know, the, the scene on the racetrack. Yeah, 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 absolutely. We absolutely. talked about that. Yeah. You can go listen to our Iron Man <laughs> um, So this scene, they so they go to the elves' world. They meet the elves. Um, and this is where, uh, well, they, they go to the elves' world and lure the elves away. So now the elves aren't going to destroy Asgard because Malekith just wants the ether. So he's just following the ether wherever <clears throat> it goes. Yeah. Um, so can we talk a minute about how, like, you know they have to sneak away and use like a special bifrost, but like the elves just go there. You know, you know what I mean? Like, huh. like how does that? You know, they never they never bother to explain how the elves travel. That's true, and I didn't even think about it. Yeah, like, I just didn't even bother to think about that. But that's that's totally a thing. Yeah, like, you know how come they? Yeah, okay. Well, well, also shouldn't shouldn't Loki's little secret tunnel go to Jotunheim, not to? The dark world, you know what I mean? Like, there's no point where they stop, that, and he's well, like, and I was wondering the same thing. Like, yeah, it's, right? like, it's like it gets him out of Asgard, but then, yeah, apparently, then I mean, it just gets him anywhere. That's yeah, how wherever he, you want to yeah. go. That's how I traveled to Earth, right? Like, that's how I traveled to Midgard and, and, and no, Avengers, right? No, because uh, he had already, yeah. no, uh, he was lost in space, and, and the, like, the, the cube, Tesseract brought the tesseract him there. Oh, the Tesseract yeah. sent him to Earth. Okay, all right, all right. So, yeah, you're right. That should have yep. been Jotunheim then. Yeah. Okay, I don't. Yeah. Or 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 they should have explained why it wasn't Jotunheim. Right. <clears throat> so okay, so they get to the dark world. Uh, Malekith and his group just go to the dark world, um, and then I really, I really, really, really hate Loki's fake betrayal because that is not a trick for <clears throat> that is a trick for the audience, not yep. a trick for the uh, elves. Yeah, you know they do the thing where he's like, you know, they're he's like, can I trust you, brother, or whatever, you know, right before they go into fight the dark yeah. elves and Loki's like nope and stabs him in the back and throws him down the hill and then runs down the hill and Thor reaches for uh calls Mjolnir and Loki cuts his hand off and he's like oh my gosh you know and then he starts saying you know he starts talking to Malekith and Malekith has been asleep for thousands of years you know what I mean and and he's just like you know the only the only way that even kind of works or is even kind of necessary is um 
you know, for his accomplice, then goes, uh, yeah, I saw that guy in the dungeon. Yeah, he's an enemy. Of, <laughs> yeah, yeah, he's an you enemy know, of like, uh, like none of that was necessary. That was all just a trick for the audience. They tricked yeah. Jane though. Well, Jane, <laughs> Jane's dumb. <laughs> We've we've established that she 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 transitions in this movie from you know contributing character to full on damsel in distress. So oh man, yeah, that's true. Yep. Yeah, I I, I think I argued with you on Thor one. I'm <laughs> done, done with that. Yeah. <laughs> yep. She she completely loses all her. Uh, you know, Cat Denning does more for this movie than she does. Cat Denning goes and gets Eric Selvig out of jail and, you know, <laughs> helps him figure out, you know, set up the, the nails and stuff. Jane Foster just runs around being sick. Being and, in love with yeah. Thor. Yeah, being, being in, sick. Yep. Yeah, being sick and sick in love. Um, so, so I really hate fake, Loki's fake plan. <clears throat> um and here's here's so here so they, so they fight uh so they pull the Malekith pulls the ether out and Thor destroys it with a lightning bolt and then it just immediately comes back together. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that plan failed yeah. miserably. Yeah, <laughs> miserably. Which, yeah, which I guess I'm okay with. Yeah, you know I'm 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 fine with that. Um, I almost feel like it would have. I mean, uh, you know, it it'd be nit like I feel like it's another kind of like over dramatic trick you know yeah. what i mean yeah. for, for him to shoot it with the lightning mm. and it explodes and then just comes right back together you know what i mean it's just like that's it's, like a cheap trick yeah, yeah cheap it's cheap heat and, and it's almost like the cheap same feeling heat. of the rock monster at the beginning it's just like like there's some setup and then that's it yeah you know it's like oh yeah you didn't you didn't and now yeah we're back to square one well know? yeah and then he just and then they just leave yeah the exactly. dark elves are just like oh, i'm out of here and then except he fights the well i guess the one hulk monster stays behind yeah you know, so they have to fight the indestructible right. Hulk monster. Except that he doesn't feel like a th- he doesn't feel like a threat. You're you right. know, yeah, absolutely. it feels like oh well, now we just you know oh we're gonna have a fight with this minion while Malekith just flies away, yeah. right? Instead of like now, oh my gosh, now he's got to take on the indestructible. <clears throat> you know what I mean? How are we gonna win this? You right, know, right, right, right. So it's super lame. But he kills Loki. He does kill Loki. So I, I was laugh I again here we go with how the looking back through the Ragnarok lens <clears throat> ruins this scene. Uh, yeah. Because I, I didn't remember like like not only is the ra- the play in Ragnarok like line for line what happens here. And like when I watched Ragnarok, I knew that it was, but I didn't know that it was until I'm watching it where they're playing it serious. Yeah. And like the music is the same. And <laughs> swell. Really? Yeah. Go go watch that the, scene. Like the silly play of like uh, Loki's big sacrifice. Yeah, yeah. Like like the same music plays. It swells the oh, same. Oh, that's actually amazing. Yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> you know, they do the same thing, you know, where he's like, uh, you know, I'll tell father what you've done. Yeah. I, I didn't. Do it for him. Oh, you know, like it's all there and the music is the same because it just, I just, I was just watching it going, is that even the same music? That's the same music. This, this music is the same. This hey, well, good on Ragnarok for that. Good on Ragnarok, Ragnarok. That's yes. That's awesome. That is yes. so awesome. Yeah. That actually makes that play even, even better. Even better. Yeah. Even better. Yeah. But it totally, it totally obliterates this scene in that, in this movie. Like Loki's like, this is the music that was playing when it happened. So. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Amazing. Um, okay, so then we get. I love how the, you can oh. tell the di- wait. I'm just want to yep, say no, please. You can tell the difference between us talking about this movie and us talking about like. Avengers and like yeah. in, that, in those podcasts we're just like oh and then this happened and then this happened and then we did this and we're like sitting here and you're just kind of like slowly struggling through your notes yeah. and me and John are just going yep yeah, uh-huh. yeah. <laughs> all right continue okay um, so then they get back yeah, so yeah so I like because it's so forgettable you know I'm trying to remember what happens so how did they how does Thor and Jane get back from the dark world because they get back to earth 
for the they for the final time to go again. You know, it's like one of those like, oh, I guess we gotta get back to Earth, and now they're on Earth. Again. <laughs> yeah, because I don't I don't remember yeah. how that happened. No, and they jumped through that portal. They found they found. Does one of the portals they open? They found one of the portals because the convergence because uh, all the all the realms are converging. So that's why because she was like she was she found the keys the car keys. Oh, that's right. Okay, she okay. found yeah, the that's car right. keys. Yeah, yeah. And then her they, phone gets reception. She gets a call from yes. the dude she was on the date with. Yeah, she gets, and he's like, oh hey, yeah, yeah, and she's like, oh my gosh, I'm so glad you called. Yeah. <laughs> He's like, oh, really? <laughs> Great. That poor guy. I know, right? I know. Yeah, so that's what happened there. I thought that was kind of clever. Because then she was like... That was. That they found, is. They, he goes... Because Thor goes, why are there so many shoes in here? <laughs> <laughs> that was yeah. awesome. <laughs> yeah. yeah, so that's how they got back to Earth. They yes. found the portal. Okay, yes, good. And that is a clever way to get them back to Earth. Yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll do that. I did like that. <laughs> um, even though I didn't write notes about it. <laughs> I was probably still too busy laughing about the, the, <laughs> the play. play, yeah, <laughs> the play from Ragnarok. Um, but so we get back, and and once once we get back, we basically go right into the final fight, yeah. which is super lame final fight. Yeah, I liked it. I liked. Did the, you? Yeah, I okay. liked like all the portal jumping and stuff like yep. that. Like I, I thought that's where the movie finally came to a little bit of life yeah. and had some fun. Yeah, I did know. not. I was bored. <laughs> <laughs> there, there was there was you know there was some jokes in it that I, there was some stuff in it that I liked. Um, I, I thought I liked, I liked seeing uh, when they did the bit with Mjolnir changing directions yeah, a yeah. bunch of times. Like, cause he, yeah, because yeah, because it, it was always going through. at a thing, and it was yeah, it was yeah. just couldn't couldn't it find could, him. It couldn't yeah. locate Thor yeah. basically. Yep. Yeah, that was fun. Yeah. Well, I, I, I liked also, all that stuff. I liked where they like because they jumped to Jotunheim for a minute, so we got to see yeah. Jotunheim, and then the big frost monster dog yep. thing followed them back through the portal yep. and started running around, and that became a new threat. And I thought that stuff was fun. Yeah. I liked. I liked that a lot. Yeah. <clears throat> I just I, I I guess I just never felt the stakes. I, I never I never felt like we were having the big showdown. You know, it was just like here's all these gags. <laughs> yeah. You know, yeah. so so And I got that. I mean, I don't like I don't know like I I, I didn't ever think Thor was going to lose or that the world was in jeopardy necessarily, but like it felt well, it Malachi, felt like the third act. Well, to I me. also I also didn't feel like Thor was fighting for his life. You know yeah. what I mean? Like yeah. I mean, Malekith just didn't feel threatening. Right. Yeah. Did yeah, not yeah, feel exactly. threatening. Right. Yeah. 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 I got, at, at that point of the movie, I got as much out of it as like as I as I think I could have, you know. Yeah. Um but I but again, I enjoyed that as a as far as third acts go. Yeah. I, I got what I wanted out of that one. I did. I did really like the one gag where him and Malekith fall through a portal into a subway, and then Malekith jumps through a portal, <laughs> yeah. and Thor like looks around and he asks the lady, you know, how do I get to Piccadilly Square, wherever they were, <laughs> yeah. you know, how do I get to such and such? And she's like, this train three stops, and he just gets on the train. <laughs> like, he doesn't say anything, you know. He's just like, oh, okay, just gets on the train yeah. and rides the train three stops. Then. Well, that was cool because that was actually like a little glimpse at like good Thor stuff, right? Yeah, like yeah. that was that was one of the few moments in the movie where we kinda got like the Thor that we like. Yeah. I feel like that and why are all the shoes in here? I, I really, I, that made me laugh real hard. Yeah. Why are there so many shoes in here? Yep. <laughs> um so okay, can we talk about the spikes? The the big the the, yeah, the Selvig there. was yeah. cause cause I don't understand how those work at all. Because at first they're like so so the big spaceship shows up and lands yeah and chose Earth to be the convergent point for all the realms and he's gonna turn all the realms back to darkness using the ether right um so then they have to they're hurrying to like put out all these spikes that they think will stabilize the so so like like they put out this perimeter of spikes because it's gonna stabilize the convergence right that's right. what. Right. Selvig says when they start putting them out, but then mm-hmm. Jane starts using them to like make dudes disappear. Yeah. So I don't understand that. Yeah, I got nothing. Okay. So yeah. then, <laughs> but so then when it's finally time for him to go destroy Malekith, he goes in with like three of them and he's throwing them like spears. And every time they hit Malekith, like a piece of Malekith disappears. Like, well, I don't like. Yeah. Can we not? Can I just, anybody? I didn't, I didn't say it was perfect. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, this. Yeah, this definitely feels appropriate for you to tear apart the science. Yeah, <laughs> like, like, there's no science for me to tear apart. Say, yeah, like, like, this, yeah, is, yeah, this like, isn't even yeah. science you can tear yeah, apart. Right, this is it just completely. Nonsense. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like not only not only does it make no sense how the crazy guy has built these nine spikes that are going to stabilize nine realms. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like yeah. like however many if we can put them around this spaceship. 
Yeah. Like, okay. Um, but, oh, now they're making people disappear. You know, like, there's no, they don't even try to explain. <sighs> no. Nope. And yeah, it's not, yeah. and not, and, and it changes. Like, that's the thing, too. Like, it, it changes how it works. Yeah. You know, because at one point it's like, oh, it, everything close to it, you know, they're like landmines. But then, yeah. like, oh, no, well, now they're I mean, with, like, with, with Iron spears. Man, with Iron Man 2, you can be like, oh, we, we made a new element. You're like, I don't know if that's how that works. Oh, we got blood poisoning, but we'll fix it this way. I don't know <laughs> yeah. how that's worked. This is like talking to a flat earther or something. <laughs> <laughs> you know? like, yes. Like, there's just nothing there. Right. You know? Like, how do you argue with that? Yep. Oh, my God. <clears throat> okay. So, so, so I'm glad. Okay. I was kind of worried somebody was going to try and explain that to me. <laughs> so that's dumb. I got nothing. The, yeah, the go. I got nothing. The, the go home is dumb there. <laughs> the go home. Um, uh, so I, I thought I thought it was funny that uh, uh, those two jets, like like flew through a bunch of portals. Like the two jets show up, and well, first of all, I thought it was funny that those two jets show up, and they're just like. The spaceship has been confirmed hostile. Blow it up. You know? Yeah. Like, yeah, like yeah, how, has yeah. Been, how has it been confirmed hostile? Like, it looks different. It's been there 30 seconds, and you guys are coming to blow Yeah, it's different. <laughs> confirmed <laughs> different. Let's kill it. <laughs> Actual logic. <laughs> but then but then they just flow, fly through a portal, yeah. and then they're just gone. Yeah. And actually, they're on the, the world from the beginning, because yeah. the, the uh, Oriental Asian, the Asian... Warrior three yeah. is the, is is there and watches them fly by, um, but they make it home. So we we get to see them fly back right as everything's reconverging. So good on those guys. Yeah, they, 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 yeah. I feel like they I feel like home. they need a movie though. Like yeah. that'd be way, a way to keep flying until you're home. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Uh, and then the movie's just over. Yeah, that's kind of it. Yeah. I mean, I guess we got. I guess we got to talk about how Loki sneaks back and. So that I like that scene a lot. Okay. Honestly, uh, it it's cool because yeah. like there's there's little things that you notice like that there's something off about Odin yep. when he's talking and like his reactions to Thor kind of talking about like uh, Loki sacrificing himself and everything like he kind of reacts to it like yeah. that but like the big giveaway obviously is the way he sits down in the throne yeah and he sits all very Loki like with like the the kind of cocked lean and the the hand on the scepter and everything and I just love that and yeah. then you get that transition where it's it's Loki yeah yep. that's, that's cool that's, that's cool. a fine scene that's a cool scene and it's it was a cool reveal especially at the time because it's like we all love loki right like he's the he's the heel we like to boo yeah and so like getting that big reveal like oh cool he's still not dead is just cool that's yeah. awesome and it loses a little bit going back to see it now but at the in the moment that that was a really cool reveal yeah. i think yeah so okay I, I wouldn't disagree with that yeah 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 I didn't, he I didn't. lets he lets Thor keep the hammer. Yeah, <laughs> well, <laughs> which is interesting. But well, what's he gonna? It, what, but you he know, already knows he can't do anything. With yeah, it, right? what's, what's yeah. he gonna do? Not be able to hold it. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that'd probably be a dead giveaway. Also, probably. Well, well yeah, that, that would have been. The, yeah, that's that's the main thing. Had he tried to hand it to him and he couldn't take it or yeah. set it down, <laughs> and, uh, just, just put it there, my son. <laughs> uh, yeah, and then that's that's pretty much it, right? Yeah, pretty That's much. The end. He yeah. he decides to go back and he's gonna live with Jane on Earth for the next fifty years or whatever. And I guess. Yeah. <laughs> whatever <laughs> happens. Just, there. Yeah, that's just, I don't know. Yeah. That's just what happens until she breaks up with him. Yeah. Uh, he they broke up. It was a mutual. It was mutual. It was mutual. Yeah, mutual dumping. Yeah, mutual. Um so <laughs> my my the the one thing, the final note that I have here is just kind of a comparison. Because I thought it was interesting to see and think about with Iron Man, they kind of took Iron Man away from us for his, for Iron Man 3, right? Um, it was all very Tony Stark and how he was dealing with things. And, you know, he had his Iron Man suit, but it didn't work. The one he had didn't work, you know? <laughs> and then even when he was, uh, you know, at the end when he was had all the Iron Man suits, you know, they were kind of getting tore up and, you know, even before he destroyed all of them, you know, he couldn't, he couldn't stay in just one. He'd jump into it and he'd get wrecked real mm -hmm. quick and he'd have to jump into another one. Yeah. 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 Um, but you know, it was all Tony Stark and his ingenuity and well, and then Pepper saving the day. <laughs> um, this one was kind of like the diff, like the opposite, you know, like we just got like full Thor you know, intergalactic, like bland as it was, you know, they really went for like the, the cosmic kind of 
you know, here's here's your magic space Viking. Yep. You yep. know. And well, and we're so, about to steer into that pretty hard though, too. Well, yeah, like, well, we're, yeah. we're really heading in that direction <laughs> yep. now. So. Yeah. But so I just thought it was an interesting dichotomy there that they you know went for yeah. you know and almost almost Iron Man's stakes were small just how's he gonna deal right, right you know right. what I mean um, versus Thor who's now single handedly saving all of the nine realms yeah I just I just thought that was an interesting kind of dichotomy you know outside of which yeah, ones I liked totally. which ones I didn't like totally I uh, I will say I think that I mean I still I still like this movie yeah uh, I have nitpicks obviously. Uh, I still liked Iron Man two. Also, they're clearly, you know, towards the bottom of my list. I will say this is exactly what I would have thought a Thor movie <coughs> would be before oh, I had ever seen a Thor movie. That's you know, an interesting. Like, yeah, it's that's... entertaining but kind of boring. The characters are okay but not great. Yeah, it's the best I'm gonna get out of a Thor movie. I'm fine with it, except for the fact that before and after this, I get great Thor movies. Yeah. <laughs> but looking back on it, like this is exactly what I thought I was going to get walking into the first Thor the first yeah, time. I can yeah. see that. That's that's a really good observation, yeah. actually. Um, yeah, when this movie ended, I I enjoyed it. I I didn't dislike it as much as you seem to. However, I cannot argue any of your your points <laughs> I, at all. I mean, it, it this movie just is. And I feel yeah. like that's that's just where it is. Like, it's yeah. fine. I feel like there's some cool moments in it that I do still think about. Like, I've always thought about that that Loki posing as Odin scene. I think yeah. that's yeah. really cool. That's I feel like that's one of those standout, like, Marvel moments yep. in the MCU. Yep. I like yeah. that. Yep. It's um, it's not a it's not a bad movie. And I would yeah. even I would even say yeah, I, I, it's a better movie than Iron Man two. Um, but it's just boring you know it's just so flat like like really to pick it apart i can't really poke that many holes in it you know yeah, yeah. Any, any more than any of the other marvel movies yeah, but yeah. with the other marvel movies there's so much more to like mm -hmm. it overshadows those little holes that we want to poke into it i can, yeah i can agree with you that. know with this one it's it's so boring it's just like <laughs> and thank goodness now, course shifted for ragnarok yeah, yeah. <laughs> well and this, you know this too like looking behind the scenes a little bit this is around that time where there is a lot of shifts between you know the phase phase one was a lot of just individual projects yep a lot of freedom of filmmakers make a good movie, add these things to it, whatever. Um, somewhere around here, we talked a little bit about you know like they had to change the villain of Iron Man three around because of some bad decision making behind the scenes. Yes, they they sort of have a, a like a writers room going for the movies right now where yeah. they've got a, a like a staff of guys who are like in charge, and around I think it's not till after. Age of Ultron, I think, when that really breaks off, or maybe it was right before. I'll have to look into that before we get to that phase. But <laughs> like we've sort of shifted into that for the next couple of movies, and then eventually that even breaks away, and it just basically becomes Kevin Feige, yeah, yeah. as as the overlord of all of it. <clears throat> but we're kind of in this transition period here where there is a little bit less total control from the filmmaker right and a little bit more of like you know people kind of sticking their their hands in and getting involved and they're really developing what basically becomes the marvel formula because everything is is on the way to becoming like this is still sort of a standalone movie there's yeah. not a lot of overlap yeah but they really shift focus coming soon here so this is kind of like them them transitioning from okay we made all our movies and then we put them together and it worked how do we keep it working? Right. And so they're kind of along this phase. So, I, again, I don't know if, if I mean, Alan Taylor maybe just a boring filmmaker. Yeah. Uh, great TV guy. Maybe doesn't transition that well. Mm -hmm. But there might have been a lot of more behind-the-scenes stuff going on than we really know about yeah. also as far as, you know, we, we know it's a, generally a bad idea when there's when there's too many irons in the fire. Yeah. And may, this might have been a little bit of a result of that mm -hmm. because it might have been several guys going, ooh, we got a dark story we can tell here, and several yep. guys going, we're really scared to tell dark stories. Yep. And when those uh, butt heads, yeah. you get a bland story. I can see that. I can <laughs> I, see uh, that. You're talking about all the transitions, too, and... and Maybe I'm wrong, but I feel like I noticed at the beginning of this movie that this was the first one that had the Marvel Studios thing at the very beginning, not the Paramount stuff. It, I feel like this was definitely the first one that had like the bum, 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 yeah. went through the whole iconic Marvel Studios <laughs> yeah. thing at the beginning. Yeah. Because right away I started it. I was like, oh, hey, 
That's yeah. the first time we've seen that. I thought they had done it in Iron Man, but like that's just so. sort of like in my Iron Man three. I, I don't. Iron I don't Man. think they did. I think this that's was just the sort first of in one. my brain right now. I know at this point we're full Disney. Yes. Uh, well, I think we were still full Disney at Avengers, right? But like, yeah. Well, but it still had the Paramount. It was still Paramount at the beginning of Avengers. Yeah, because because Paramount was distributing through yeah. Avengers. Yes. But I think Disney made Avengers. Yes. I believe. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so that was that it's was weird how those you know it is weird how that works. Like all of a sudden, somebody else is making it, but the right. other company still puts it out and everything like that. And I know Disney has spent a ton of money just getting all of the naming and all right. of that stuff done. But again, you don't without being there in the room, you don't know who's calling what shots for some of this stuff. So, right. but uh, yeah, and then those crawls just get better and better as we yeah, go along. Yeah, I know it's cool because like it's become part of like the excitement factor yeah. of these movies yeah. starting. <laughs> like you see that, and you're just like, yeah. yeah. You know, actually, I don't like the new one, though. Really? You don't like the most recent one? Yeah. Yeah. Nope. (laughs) Uh, All right. So I guess we we need to talk about the mid credit scene because it's it's pretty important. Yes. And I feel like this is this is a very Mm. important mid credit scene to the overarching Marvel Cinematic Universe. Yes. Um, Because we get we get a, a real good glimpse of what's to come with Guardians of the Galaxy here because we meet the collector. And we get to see a little bit of the the wacky world that we're about to get thrust into, uh, but the reason this is so important in this scene is because they they hand the aether over to him to hold on to right. as part of his collection, and the reason they give is that it's dangerous to keep two infinity stones in the same place. Yeah, and that line right there is such an exciting line for this moment because yep. at the end of Avengers, our credit scene was oh Thanos is here. Yeah. And this scene right here with them saying to Infinity Stones, it's sealed in concrete yep. the direction we were going. Right. We're doing the Infinity Saga, yep. the, the Infinity storyline. So, uh, yeah, it, it's really cool to like look at that from this moment, looking back at it going, wow, this was a big deal. Yeah. When they said that, that was a big deal. Yep. So that that's really cool. I like it a lot. Yep. And then, and then the very end, we just get Thor kissing Jane and the big dog yeah. thing running around. Which again is just, just <laughs> like like most of this movie, just this thing that happens and yeah. then leads to Yay. nothing. Yeah, because you know? <laughs> we go to the future movies and Thor and Jane are done, and we never hear from that dog. We never hear about yeah. that dog again. <laughs> yeah, I, ice dog. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Good I can't call. wait. I can't Good wait call. for the ice dog movie. <laughs> awesome. No, I, I hope he shows up at the end of Endgame, and that's like, you know, that's, that's like, what takes down Thanos. Yeah, that's like that's like the big, you know, Thanos has everybody beat, you know, and and Captain America does the I could do this all day, and Thanos punches him, and he passes out, he explodes. Yeah, you know, and Thanos is just like, you know, I did it. I, yeah. I did it. And then all of a sudden, here he comes, like. Uh, Maybe uh, Scarlet Witch can be riding him, like like uh, like Falcor. No, no, <laughs> like no, like like Gina Davis on the sandworm and Beetlejuice, <laughs> and the <laughs> the snow dog just comes oh in God. and swallows Thanos. Yes. <laughs> if that movie ends any other way, I'm upset now. <laughs> Oh my gosh! Oh, yeah, the, the 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 only other thing to add to this, I think it's funny how like the 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 mid credit sequence, the most important part of this movie. Yeah, and yes. and 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 the, and the best part of the DVD, in my opinion, is this is where we get the all hail the king one shot. Oh yes, so, yes. So this, the Iron Man three follow up that we talked about a little bit the in Mandarin the Iron Man three episode, thing is on and they explain the Mandarin and they give us more, tre- you know, fifteen more minutes of Trevor Slattery, yeah, yeah. which is delightful, <laughs> yeah, you know, and that scene in the prison and Justin Hammer shows up and all that stuff. So that's a really fun little one shot. Gives you know anybody who is really upset about the Mandarin thing is satiated. Hopefully, this, this was know, for them. Yeah, fix, this fix, for them. fixes that part of it, and uh, and like I said, just gives us some more Ben Kingsley. And, yeah, and was a good little time. Cool. So I had more fun. More fun rewatching that. Yeah, than I did rewatching Thor too. <laughs> All right. Well, that was Thor: The Dark World, for better or worse. <laughs> one Loki helmet. Ooh. One half a Loki helmet. Oh, just a okay. half. Just a half. So one it gets half. so it gets one big bendy horn. Just one, <laughs> one big bendy horn. I like it. <laughs> That's a good rating. <laughs> awesome. All right, well, we are now two movies into Phase 2. Uh, next episode is going to be a good one because we're talking about The Winter Soldier. Which... Yeah, I don't know. It might not be that great of an episode. <laughs> it's going to be another one of us marking yeah. out. 
<laughs> well, be sure to come back for that then, because yeah. it's I'm gonna have if fun. If you enjoy about us it. being happy, you will like the next episode. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> All right, guys. Well, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, just a reminder, if you are joining us for the first time, we are available in many different formats. If you're an audio podcast person, be sure to check us out on iTunes, Stitcher, Google Play, Podbean, and leave us a review and a rating. We would really appreciate that. We are just part of the Geek Easy podcast feed. So feel free to check out our other shows while you're there. We've got uh, shows about wrestling. We've got the main show, which covers just all of this stuff, basically, together, talking about movies and movie news and wrestling and toys, all that good stuff. We're also available on YouTube in video format. So head on over to the Geek Easy podcast and hit that subscribe button. Smash that like button. Leave us a comment. All that all that good stuff. Hit the bell for notifications. I don't know. Everything you hear on YouTube all the time. (laughs) That stuff. (laughs) And that's going to end this episode of Marvel Good Yay. So until next time, thanks for listening, guys. Marvel Good Yay. The Geek Easy Podcast is a production of PixelDan.com. Musical tracks used in the intro and outro are used with full permission of the respective owners or creators. Intro and outro narrations are provided by me, Brian T. Stevenson. PixelDan.com's The Geek Easy Podcast is provided for entertainment purposes only. The views expressed are those solely of the hosts or guests and do not necessarily represent those of PixelDan.com or any other party. Be sure to join us next time for another installment of the Geek Easy Podcast. Hey Danny, great minisode again. I uh, I almost forgot to uh... introducing the collector, Doctor John. Ugh, look, I am not a. You know what? Never mind. Look, I forgot to give you this. Interesting. And why, may I ask? Do you want this here? Because we can't have two of them in the same place. Look, I I have no idea where we're going with this. Well, it will be safe here. Eight down, twelve to go.